Hello, I'm Mayor Skip Hall, and welcome to our State of the City video event. As we look back on 2020, we witnessed a hopeful beginning. We opened a new library, welcomed the Fine Art and Wine Festival, cut the ribbon on the Ottawa University expansion, celebrated the completion of the Texas Ranger Player Housing Complex, and kicked off a fan-filled spring training season. What a great start. But by early spring, a turn of unexpected events changed everything. As we look back on this past year, we see that the COVID-19 pandemic created hard circumstances and required major change and difficult choices. But each of those difficulties were met with bold resilience. We witnessed the strength of our community. We watched neighbors rise up to help one another. We saw the tireless sacrifice of first responders and essential workers. And here at City Hall, your city council and city leadership moved quickly to support and keep safe our residents and our businesses. COVID-19 shifted our direction, but it did not shift our focus, which has always been to care for our community. Please enjoy the video. I clearly remember the moment in mid-March where things pivoted when we realized we were in unprecedented times and we had to make some quick and difficult decisions. We assembled an incident management team bringing city experts together to identify the best ways we could protect our community during this crisis. Between the middle and end of March, events and programs were canceled, spring training had come to a halt, and Mayor Hall issued a declaration of emergency. But the work of the incident management team led to the launch of new initiatives in support of our residents and businesses. We created a COVID-19 webpage where residents could get the latest information and then added customized online pages to connect them to business and workforce resources, community care resources, and financial relief information. The city continuity team proved to be a valuable addition to our incident management team. In addition to our virtual resources, we added real human contacts for businesses and for vulnerable populations seeking rent, food, and utility support to counteract the impact of COVID-19 in our community. This city did not get through this on our own. Nonprofits, businesses, and residents stepped up and answered the call. Businesses donated thousands of masks to our public safety teams. Residents donated essential household items to the Neighbors Helping Neighbors campaign, where we partnered with local nonprofits to collect things like toilet paper, soap, food, and diapers that could be distributed to families in need. And there were a lot of families in need. Our bill assistance program through the Surprise Resource Center saw an 88% increase in families served in 2020 versus 2019. That's over 1,600 families. Also in 2020, the Resource Center saw a 53% increase in calls for social services. Calls to our neighborhood services team, which handles our housing programs, increased nearly 130% and our senior center, which was closed due to the pandemic, served more than 26,000 meals, an increase of 149% from the year prior. When the pandemic came, we saw uh, quite a few people actually um, stay home and not call. They were, everyone was really uncertain on what was gonna happen. After a while, we started getting a lot of calls and a lot of people trying to come in and so the demand has been uh, extremely high. So we're grateful that um, we have the support from our Maricopa County uh, partners who pass through federal funds. Our partnership model is what makes the Resource Center strong. And it's all of our nonprofits, our governmental entities, that if we can help them, we know someone who probably could. Businesses also felt the effects of the pandemic and our economic development team got creative with ways to help them. The Sea Red Get Fed Banner Program and Online Restaurant Guide are two great examples. At the beginning of the pandemic, we knew it was important to get the word out that some of these restaurants are open for business, whether it's curbside, delivery, um, takeout, whatever the case may be. 
The second phase of the program is really helping all of the retailers. So we had an additional hundred or so uh, retailers in the community from Michael's all the way to smaller businesses put a big purple banner on if they're not a food service business, but they wanted to advertise that they are open for business. We wanted to make a splash. So we did a virtual ribbon cutting campaigns. We did over a hundred, which were really little boomerang videos that we were able to share on social media that those businesses could actually share and promote. City Council made sure the city's policies were supportive of our businesses as well. They amended the city's sign policy to ease restrictions and help businesses better promote themselves. They also created a no-fee temporary expansion of premise permit, allowing local restaurants to expand their outdoor service area for a safer dining experience. And when CARES Act funding came in from the state, they approved $375,000 in small business relief grants over two rounds of funding. They also allocated $180,000 to meal programs, homeless support, and water utility assistance. So one thing that was really critical to, I think, our success and surprise is being able to really support those most vulnerable businesses in our community. So um, we really had a heart for those businesses that were either closed or really severely impacted by the executive orders. And we uh, provided funding resources in tranches from anywhere between $1,500 to $10,000. We determined that the 79 businesses that we assisted helped retain 483 surprise jobs over the course of the pandemic. And that is critical. The pandemic certainly motivated some new programs here in Surprise, but it also created the need to innovate some existing programs and events. While it wasn't safe for all of us to physically gather, we had to find ways to stay connected. Public meetings went virtual and online solutions were implemented for city services so residents and customers could perform city business from the safety of their homes. Of course, Surprise is known for its community events so it was important to move forward with those in a new way. We knew that we were not going to be able to gather, so we as staff really wanted to continue our traditions of our special events. So we came up with a lot of virtual programming. We started with Surprise Fiesta Grande, had a week long full of events. And then our annual surprise party event came along and we had about 4,800 participants during that week. And then Spring Extravaganza, full lineup there as well. Really, we heard from families that they were really happy with the virtual programs, really gave staff the ability to be creative. Our Parks and Recreation team also got creative with rec programming, bringing some new at-home programs into play. In August of 2020, our sports staff started doing eSports. It's been really, really popular. We've had a few hundred players play in that. Uh, those tournaments over the last year and we also have done a lot of virtual bingo and it's been really popular as well especially with our adaptive program participants. Over at the Senior Center our human service and community vitality team also found new ways to bring people together. The pandemic hits we have to close the Senior Center on Friday the 13th March 13th it was really tough for us everything was happening so fast we had to pivot very quickly into Normally we're, we're able to do a meal program Monday through Friday, come in, uh, talk with your friends. Um, now we had to pivot to a drive-through meal program overnight. And that didn't just stop for Monday through Friday. We actually expanded to a program we've never run before, a, a weekend meal program. We knew that um, the, the social isolation would take a toll on all of us. Um, if you're living alone as a senior, that, that can be very difficult as well. And so our team very creatively started making phone calls, checking in. We started sending postcards. We started doing virtual programming. They provided online services. They provided exercise classes virtually. They provided art and craft classes virtually. And I know that's been impactful for our, our members. The team also hosted our annual Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Celebration and Service virtually. This event is significant every year in highlighting the importance of unity within our diverse community. But with race and inclusivity leading conversations around the country this past year, it felt more important than ever to celebrate and remember the legacy of Dr. King, a Nobel Peace Prize winner and civil rights activist who affected change and inspired a nation. The pandemic may have stopped many things, 
but it did not stop progress from happening here in Surprise as housing and commercial development flourished. In 2020, we issued nearly 2,500 single-family housing permits and more than 1 million square feet of new commercial permits. Our northern area continues to see growth, as does our southwest area near Loop 303. In the southwest, the luxury housing community of Sterling Grove continues to build and officially opened their 18-hole Nicholas Design Golf Course a couple of months ago. This is the first new golf course to open to public play in all of Arizona since 2016. In February, Phoenix Business Journal reported that the home builder Taylor Morrison purchased 178 acres just east of the Sterling Grove development. This area will continue to be a hotspot for new development. We are also addressing the need to blend the city's housing options. Multifamily housing is growing in surprise, both for rent and for sale. At the beginning of March of this year, there were more than 1,400 units under review by city staff, with more than 400 additional units approved by city council. That's on top of more than 400 units under construction right now or recently completed. The majority of these projects are in the southwest portion of the city, the downtown Civic Center area or the original town site. We were also proud to offer a new affordable housing option this year, Heritage at Surprise. This 100-unit permanent supportive rental housing community is located in our original town site and is thanks to a partnership with the Housing Authority of Maricopa County. Heritage at Surprise is 100 units that is providing individuals who can't afford market rate rent opportunities to live in Surprise, to stay in Surprise and work in Surprise. The reality is affordable housing and rents are very high in our area. Overnight, it was filled, so there was no difficulty filling it. But one of the most important parts of that development is the supportive housing component. With the addition of new homes and residents, commercial growth is sure to follow, and we saw this trend continue throughout the year. In June, the city approved the site plan for Marriott Spring Hill Suites in Surprise City Center. In August, the Kansas City Royals broke ground on their new four-story player housing complex, the Fountains at Surprise Center, which is located next to the new Texas Rangers player housing complex across from Surprise Stadium. That same month, Amazon announced they were building a delivery station at Litchfield Road and Sweetwater Avenue, which will bring hundreds of jobs to Surprise when it opens this year. In September, Costco opened its doors to the thrill of thousands of residents who repeatedly voted that retailer as the most wanted in our annual retail survey. In October, we cut the ribbon on our city's first hospital, Abrazo Surprise. Located near Loop 303 and Bell Road, it brings more quality and emergency healthcare options closer to home. And while these big projects bring a big impact to our city, so do the dozens of smaller retail and entertainment projects that create a sense of place and community. We need those small businesses in our community to really add a heart to everything that we do. There were businesses like Spencer's Place that opened that really they give opportunities to young adults with d developmental disabilities. That was so exciting. The other business, Sweet Tea. You'll never find a, a cozier coffee place in your life than Sweet Tea. And what's great about Sweet Tea is that the owner and all of the staff are fluent in American Sign Language. So there have been some cool factor things that have happened. Player One Arcade um, is one of those. We've been waiting anxiously for them to open and that we're so excited that they recently did. It's businesses like that that really give our community kind of a cool factor. It gives us an opportunity to find that meeting place where people can hang out, where you're excited to bring people to your community. Another important area of progress includes the general obligation bond projects that our voters approved in 2017 to meet our needs for today and secure a path for the future. Two major road projects were completed in August. Waddell Road from the east limit of Loop 303 to Reams Road has been built out to six travel lanes and a traffic signal was added at the intersection of Saraval Avenue and Waddell Road. The Litchfield Road Improvement Project widened the stretch of road from Waddell to Peoria and gave us a new traffic signal at Litchfield and Sweetwater. Work on Greenway Road is underway now, with widening and other improvements between Cotton Lane and Saraval Avenue. 
The work should be complete in November. So in addition to our bond projects, we added many new projects that are focused on driver safety. Last year, we added eight signals to our roadway network. Also, we added 18 new flashing arrows to signals throughout the city. Our pavement preservation projects also helped deteriorating roadways come back to excellent condition. We also built a new fire station in our bustling northern area on 163rd Avenue near the Happy Valley Road alignment. Fire Station 304 had been a temporary, modular facility for many years before residents voted to fund this project. Now this state-of-the-art fire station will help meet the needs of this fast-growing area of our city for years to come. Surprise will soon be celebrating the completion of all the construction projects approved by the voters for the general obligation bond in 2017. An example is Fire Station 308 behind me. This station started construction in December 2020 and should be open by September, October of 2021. And it represents along with the new Fire Station 304 that was opened up, the current state of the art technology as far as voids of cancer for firefighters. And we're looking forward to having this station in service. The Public Safety Evidence and Readiness Center has been under construction since November and is expected to be complete this fall. It will house police property and evidence and accommodate centralized storage of police and fire emergency equipment and supplies. The police training facility will open in the fall as well. The facility will consist of a classroom, some administrative space, a defensive tactics training room, and a simulation training room. This will allow us to do scenario-based training to best equip our officers to serve the needs of the community. We are also working on purchasing land in Southwest Surprise to prepare for a future fire station, police substation, and neighboring park. Park space has been a big topic of discussion this past year, and in December, Council voted to fund more than $8 million in park-related projects that advance the goals of the city's Parks and Recreation Master Plan. So with that new funding, um, we are going to be completing Gaines Youth Ball Field here, um, ready this summer on Nash and Rim Rock in the original town site. It will have a lighted youth ball field. It will have restrooms, lighted parking. Really looking forward to having that amenity. We also will start design on a new park. It's going to be located north of Countryside Recreation Center. It will have um, multi-use lighted fields as well as parking and restrooms and it's really going to increase our capacity for programming as well as rental capabilities. As we look to what's to come, there's a lot to be excited about. A COVID-19 vaccine is being administered around the world and the city has been a strong partner in its regional distribution through Banners Pod at Del Webb. Our emergency manager, public safety staff, and other regional partners quickly jumped in to help with everything from planning to daily logistics. With that important advancement, we're starting to see hope for the future, a future that looks bright here in Surprise as we continue to plan for growth and attract new development. The thing I'm most excited about, and I think our residents will be excited about, is the quarter at Surprise City Center. The quarter at Surprise City Center is a 78-acre mixed-use, entertainment-focused, restaurant, retail, everything you'd want, walkable entertainment destination. This isn't just your normal development. This is our heartbeat. This is a sense of place. But City Center isn't the only area of town that's piquing developer interest. It's happening all over Surprise. The Prasada market area has been totally changed by really two things, Costco and Sterling Grove. What Costco has added is really a market confidence. So about a month after Costco opened its doors, we received a master plan for more than 890,000 square feet of retail, which is about the equivalent of 18 grocery stores. What we're hearing is that it's a level of interest unlike anything the developer has seen before. So they're getting multiple offers, often for the same site. Um, we're getting quality of tenants that maybe have not ever even been in Arizona before. As we grow in residents and rooftops, we attract more amenities and we'll soon see just how many residents strong we are. The results of the 2020 census are coming this year. Thank you to everyone who participated in the survey. Having an accurate population count helps us get our fair share of federal funding. It also helps us to revise our city district boundaries to ensure equal representation as we grow. So stay tuned for news on redistricting. 
Surprise is made up of six city council districts. Your council members represent your voice as we continue to plan for the future, and each of them believes the future of Surprise is very promising. Surprise is known for fast growth, but I believe will also be known for smart growth. Surprise is known for community, but I believe will also be known for tourism. Surprise is known for recreation, but I believe will also be known for education. Surprise is known for being safe, but I believe will also be known for being innovative. Surprise is known for being new, but I believe will also be known for having character. Surprise is known for having potential, but I believe will also be known for arriving at a whole new level. Our city is known for a lot of great things, things that make our community desirable and special. But there is so much more to come, Surprise. And while we're working on holding tight to the values that define us, we're also leaping forward to the opportunity that lies ahead. Together, we will rise from the challenges of the year 2020. Together, we will create the vision for tomorrow. Together, we are Surprise Arizona, a place that continues to live up to its name. Thank you, and may we all look to a brighter future together.